I want to remind you that I'm I'm shy, so if you can't hear me, I'll try to speak up. I dressed up tonight because I'm in the month I'm in the middle and amongst TV stars. I've been hearing about y'all on TV all week long. So you know what? There's a lot of people gunning for the homeless crowd. It's a problem and they, they would like for the problem to go away. But you know what? You're people. And, and we're concerned and we, we want to take care. That's why we're here providing meals and here providing a lesson for you. So, you know, it is a problem. And we're just going to continue to pray God for resolution. First and foremost, the answer to that problem is the gospel. You realize the Savior, your need for the Savior, He saves you. And that changes your life completely. But you don't come to Christ for the for the bennies. You know what I'm saying? You come to Christ for a whole different reason. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about tonight. You know, over the past month or two, I've been going through Romans 8 with you. Now, Romans 8, the, the big thing to remember about Romans 8 is that there is therefore now no condemnation for them who are in Christ Jesus. Now, if there is no condemnation, that means for some there is condemnation. Now remember, we talked about how you, those that are saved walk in the Spirit, and those who are not saved walk in the flesh. And that that's how you know if you're saved, where you're walking, in the Spirit or in the flesh. And that's what, that's what, what we've been going through. Now tonight, I want to do something along the same lines, but I'm going to move us over into Romans chapter 5. Now what you've got to realize is that Christ didn't die in vain for you. Christ died for a reason for you, for every single one of you. Now Romans 5 starts building out and showing you what Christ accomplished on the cross and what Christ did for you. Now until you come to that realization of what Christ did for you, you will not take hold of, of His purchase. Now that may sound odd to you tonight, but I want to try to help flush that out for you a little bit more. See, in the, in the chapter 5 of Romans, it, it talks about justification. The easy way to remember justification is Christ made you just as if you had never sinned. That's the easy way to remember a big word, justification. So tonight, I'm going to read two verses out of Romans 5. It's Romans 5, 1 and 2. And what we're going to talk about, we're going to see that Christ provides peace with God and then Christ provides access to God. And what this is called is reconciliation. Now reconciliation is, is a huge concept. And if you don't rightly understand reconciliation, your salvation may be at risk on this one. You've got to understand what Christ did for you. Now. Reconciliation is basically, just by way of definition, it means to restore, to make right, or to change those that are odds or at variance with one another. So you see, in your situation with the city council, they're trying to find reconciliation because they, they have a problem. There's, there's odds and variances, and they're trying to make it right. People have different ideas of what right is. I've been hearing some of that mess. But where Christ is concerned, he's making you right with God the Father. Now Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. The big thing to remember here is we have peace with God. What's the opposite of peace? War. War. Now, if I don't have peace with God, that must mean that I am at war with God, right? That's, that's logic. That makes sense, right? So, this, I don't feel at war with God. You might be saying that in your mind right now. Hey, you know what? I don't know who this God is you're talking about, but hey, I'm just out here doing my thing. I'm not at war. But you know what? Let me show you something what the scripture says. Over at Colossians 1.21, it says, And you that were sometime alienated 
and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. See, you were alienated from God. Right now, many of you are alienated from God. That means you're, you're away from him. You're apart from God. And you're alienated from God in your mind through your wicked works. See, a lot of us, we think we can earn our way to heaven. Isn't that right, Ireland? Ireland, you remember we were talking about being away from God. And we think we can earn our way to God, right? Yeah. You didn't know there was a pop quiz, did you? No, I'm messing with you. <laughs> but, see, we think we can earn our way to heaven. See, we're not out here with all this food thinking we're earning our way to heaven. This, this is nice, but it ain't going to get anybody to heaven. You know, I can't pray enough to get to heaven. I can't go to church enough to get to heaven. You can't earn your way to heaven. And this is why we're, we're alienated from God because we're wrapped up in our idolatry. We're wrapped up in our sin. We've got so many things that separate us from God and, and that's all our sin. But this is just part of our, our alienation from God. I hope y'all remember I, I gave a, a verse not long ago. It was John 3.36. And it says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Amen. You see, God's wrath abides on every one of us because we've all sinned. You know, God says that all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Now, I'm looking at the crowd, and as nice as y'all look, I'd be willing to bet money we've all lied. I know I have. And God says that all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. He says that no thief will inherit the kingdom of God. If we're honest, we've all stolen something, right? Yes. We've all have. No thief shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now check this one out. This one's a little tough. You might cry foul on this one. God says that no adulterer will inherit the kingdom of God. And a lot of you may think, you know what? I'm not married. I'm free and clear on that one. Whoa, wait a minute. Jesus, in Matthew 5, he talks about that if you think, if you look upon a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. Now that applies to women, whether you're looking at men or whoever you're looking at. If you're having those thoughts that you don't want to share with mama, that's the ones I'm talking about. He says, you've committed adultery in your heart. He says that no adulterer will inherit the kingdom of God. No fornicator shall inherit the kingdom of God. That means any sexual relationship you've had outside the bounds of marriage is fornication. And God says, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, do you see? We're all guilty. We've broken all those, right? I'm no better than you. I'm no better than you, but there's something different. If I die today, I know I'm going to heaven. And I want to get to that and tell you a little more about that. But you know what? I want to make sure that you understand the wrath of God. Because I'm tired of these TV preachers that preach a hippy-dippy Jesus. I want you to know who God is. And Nahum 1, 2, God is jealous, and the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. Do you see that you're, if you're an enemy, you've got the wrath of God reserved for you, and the wrath of God abiding on you? You have no hope if you're an enemy of God. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. You see, acquit, that means you're clean, you're free, you're innocent, you're pure. But God's not going to just let you go because you've broken all those laws of His, all those commands of His. And you can't just start doing better because it doesn't matter. Once, once you've broken the law, it's broke. It don't matter if you don't break it no more. Right? 
Now, let me give you one more. I'm going to start showing you something that you're going, your heart's leaping to hear right now. You want me to shut up because I'm just telling you about the wrath of God. But you've got to understand the wrath of God before you understand the grace of God. Listen to Psalm 711. God judgeth the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. He's not going to give you a free pass. You know, we violated that law. We've all broken the law of God. But in Psalm 103, we read, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. If I die today, I'm going to heaven because he hasn't dealt with me according to my sin. He did something for all of us. 2,000 years ago, he came to this earth. He was fully God, fully man. His name is Jesus Christ. That Amen. swear word you use is the name of your Savior. And you drag it through the mud. 2,000 years ago, he came to this earth. He took on your sin and my sin, the whole world's sin. And he died on the cross. It pleased the Father to pour out His wrath that you all and I deserve and pour it out on Him. And He bore the wrath of God. And He said, My God, my God, why hast Thou forsaken me? Because in that point in time, God the Father forsook God the Son because He will not look upon anything that is full of iniquity. He bore our transgression. He was not sinful in and of himself, but when he took our sin, he became sin for us so that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's huge. You see, when he died, that, paid, that was a legal fine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. So he dies. That paid the fine that you and I owe. Three days later, Jesus rose from the dead, proclaiming victory to all creation. And what you must do to receive that victory is you've got to repent. Repent of your dead works that you're alienated from God in. Repent of your sinful lifestyle. And respond to his, his kind gift to you in humility and trust in the resurrected Jesus Christ to save you from the wrath to come. There is a day. It is appointed once unto man to die, and after this, the judgment. There's a day coming when we will stand before the wrath of God. Me, I will be sheltered. And I know some of you, too, will be sheltered. Those are the, the Christians that are bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. They will be sheltered. But those that have despised the Son will not be sheltered, and the wrath of God abides. Now remember Romans 5, we have peace with God because of what Jesus did. We have access to God because of what Jesus did. This is our reconciliation to God. God doesn't change. See, God changes us. God's perfect. He doesn't need to change. We're sinful. We're the ones that need to change. See, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't need to change. But you know what? I was sinful yesterday and today, but forevermore I will be glorified with Jesus Christ because he has bought and paid my fine. Amen. You must repent and believe on the resurrected Jesus Christ. If you will hear his voice today, don't harden your heart. Turn. This world has nothing to offer you. You know, we think that we like it our way. We live in our sinful ways and we think this is best. This life's a blink of an eye. You don't know how much time you got. So I beg you to hear this message tonight. <laughs> Repent and believe on the resurrected Jesus Christ. The wrath of God abides on you.
Jesus Christ is sustaining that wrath for me. How about you? Amen. Is Jesus Christ restraining the wrath of God the Father from you? Yes. He's coming. He's coming in flaming fury one day. And you know what? There's many people that say, you know what? We don't have to worry about that. That's an old wives tale. Well, you know what? The Bible says you're going to say that. So repent and believe. So I'm going to release you for this to come eat. And I'm going to hang out here a bit. And if you have questions, you come ask me. I look, doesn't it say somewhere in the book that if thou wilt uh, humble yourself enough and bow down to God and, and like, uh, I don't know, like, how do you say it? God like, resisted the proud and give grace to the humble. No, like, you know, he admit, wants a humble heart. No, like admit all your sins and stuff and pray to God or that, something. That's repentance. That thou, now, see, our repentance doesn't save us. I Jesus know. Christ alone saves us, well, I mean, but that's but, our response. But, I mean, but see, you cut me off short there, brother. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's, Go it's ahead. Like, it's like, uh, like you do all that, you know. I mean, get down on your knees, you pray to God Almighty in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. Because no one comes unto the Father except through Jesus. Truth. Yes, yeah. No. Okay, thank you. Okay, and then if you do that and you admit and you claim. God, Jesus, as your Savior, that you shall be forgiven and you shall be cleansed. Um, I mean, so, I don't know so much about the cleansing part, but so much be be accepted, you know, as a follower. Yeah. That's exactly it. You know, that's Second Corinthians five twenty one says, "For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him." So. That's the big exchange of history. The big unfair exchange is I get the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ, and he gets my sin. And that's we come to, to Christ through repentance and faith, and he saves us. But listen to this. Just a quick, short little prayer is a quick, short little prayer. Jesus is talking about you surrendering in humility, like you were talking about, crying out and then clinging to him with all your life. And he was talking to... All your heart. Right? That's right. He was talking to Nicodemus in John chapter 3 and he said, you know, how can a man be born again? Jesus said, if you're not born again, you're not going to see the kingdom of God. And this being born again is that radical renewal where Christ comes in and gives you a heart transplant through his spirit. And so he gives you new wills, new desires and enables you to live in the grace and glory of Christ. And that's what that's what you're talking about is coming to Christ. But you know what? When you meet Christ, you're not going to continue living in the same filth that you have always lived because it's a radical change, right? I'm, I'm no longer a drunk because I met the Savior and He changed me. He saved me. See? Because I, I don't want to do that. All that stuff hung Him on the tree. Do you see? Why would I want to glory in sin that killed my Savior? See? So he changes us. He enables that. So let me say a quick prayer over the food here. I'll turn you loose. And if y'all have any questions, y'all come see me. And think. Think on this this day. If you die tonight, where will you spend your eternity? Get that settled. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the truth of your word. And Lord, we just uh, thank you for the hands that prepared this meal. We thank you for all the workers that are involved out here setting up and doing all the, the work that's involved. And Lord, above all, we thank you for your peace and grace tonight. And may you just bless all these that, that feed here tonight and just pray you'd protect them and keep them safe so that they might come to the knowledge of you and repent and believe. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.